is here, and we're going to be doing more Mistcraft Dev. Uh, joining me in TeamSpeak today is Mayadim. Uh, the moment he's Hi. the only one here. Yep, there he is. The moment he's the only one here, aside from myself, of course. You know, that would be a little odd if I wasn't here. Uh, but we're going to be doing some Mistcraft Dev. Uh, I'm going to yammer a bit while we wait for people to actually be able to connect. Uh, I'm trying something new that I have... Honestly, stolen from Soren. Uh, <laughs> I, I've looked at how Soren did things, and I went, "Ah, oh, that's a pretty cool system," and I like the idea behind that. Uh, so I have copy, or I looked at how Soren did his donations, uh, and I really like the idea of if you donate, then it shows up on the stream while I'm streaming, uh, because then we can go, "Yay, you donated! Thank you!" Uh, instead of me seeing the donations later and going, "Oh, thank you to nobody at all." <laughs> uh, so th this way, you know, you you'll actually be able to put a message up on the stream, uh, and we'll be able to you know, appreciate you live. So thank you for being awesome, kind of thing. Uh, and I think I set this up right. We're, we'll see. I even went so far to try and add donation sounds and things, uh, but yeah. Uh, I also fixed up my streaming a good bit. Uh, I think the resolution should be much, much nicer now, so it should be much easier to read the text and see what's going on. Not to mention uh, the game will be much crisper and clearer, so you'll be able to see what's going on there, too. Uh, all right, so you can see on the bottom there, the little text tracker, I'm building a... And <laughs> Another thing with building up, or like fixing my resolution stuff, the text got smaller, and you can see more of the actual screen stuff, as opposed to just, oh, giant text elements. Uh, like this text scroller thing at the bottom. Uh, that was the only one I had before. The top donation and most recent things are new. Uh, and from this point, I'm really not going to talk about the donation, and I'm still just yammering for people to show up, because it takes a few minutes for that to happen. You have to get through commercials and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I have a pop-up thing as well for donations. It'll show up. Uh, it'll also play a sound. You know. Ooh, fancy. It, it's just built into the system. It's like, okay, I, I'll make use of that. It should be funny. Uh, but I'm not going to bother, you know, paying too much attention to it aside from when somebody donates, at which point I'll go, thank you. Probably with more enthusiasm than just going, oh, thank you. Uh... Alright, so text tracker at the bottom tells me that my task for right now is to disable the Miscraft Villager for a config option for that. Uh, right, so... This was requested, I think, yesterday. Maybe earlier today, I'm not really sure. If it was earlier today, then it seems like it was probably before I went to bed. Uh, so, basically, somebody wanted to be able to disable the Miscraft Villager because they didn't want people to be able to buy the pages. They were doing something on a server. And that's entirely legitimate. Uh, that's definitely something they should be empowered to do. So we're going to, be, we're going to try and do this. Uh, the first thing that strikes me is the easiest way to do this is just completely disable the Archivist. Uh, just make it so that the Archivist is never added to the game, never registered. Uh... And that's not rocket science. In fact, that's, it's, that's why that's the easiest thing to do. I can just make it so I never build this archivist under a config option. Uh, and that's private, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, what I'm going to have to check for things is whether or not it's enabled before I try spawning it. Uh, And one thing I'd really like to be able to do uh, at a more complicated level is to be able to disable them spawning normally, but still allow you to spawn them through spawner eggs. And I went and I looked before the stream uh, while I was setting things up because I was curious, and it doesn't seem like that's possible to do. So if we look at... Uh, here... Uh, when children are spawned, so I can prevent them from spawning, but I can't prevent children uh, villagers from becoming archivists, which is strange. Uh, so when a child is spawned, it just creates a new entity villager, 
and then it runs the on spawn with egg. So this is basically the function for whenever a new uh, villager is spawned, so it runs this. Uh, that then does the super for on spawn with egg. I don't know what that does offhand. Uh, it sets up attributes and things and whatnot. Uh, it then calls from the village registry this function apply random trade, which is a forge thing. Uh, it allows us to uh, assign the uh, profession to the villager. So it sets the profession. to that. So this will happen every time. Basically this means that uh, it pulls from any villagers that are registered. So the spawn from egg and the spawn as child are identical and there's no way I can differentiate them so I cannot disable villagers except for spawner eggs. I can't do that. Which is unfortunate. Uh, so that means I'm going to have to disable the archivist outright and entirely, and then work from there. Now, how do I want to disable the archivist? One option is to add a config option, just a brand new one, that says whether or not the archivist is enabled. This seems a bit overkill in that I have an archivist ID that I already pull in from configuration here. Uh, so. You can already configure what the archivist ID is. You very rarely need to do this because we have a lot of IDs available for archivists or for villagers. Uh, and it's some ridiculously large and random number here. It's on really, really unlikely to conflict with anybody's villager ID. Uh, but you'll notice the same as my provider ID for my dimension provider stuff, the world logic, because they could be. And I felt it nice to have the same number. Uh, And this is used in a few places outside of here. So I'm going to close these two things here, pull this up, and let's see. Uh, it's used here. It's used several places inside this class. It's used once here when registering the villager skin. So let's see what that does. If the uh, yeah, so that's just the villager skin. I could actually ignore that entirely. Uh, if the archivist ID is, or if the archivist is not enabled. Uh, but I can't set it, if, if, if the archivist ID is not valid, uh, then I shouldn't do that set, because I may accidentally set somebody else's villager skin, which would be entertaining, but wrong. Uh, and then, get villager type. You'd like to spawn on the component. Right, so this is for my archivist house here. Uh, I have a thing for spawn villagers somewhere. Spawn villagers here. XYZ and villager count. Uh, so these are the places I need to pay attention to uh, for when villagers are spawned, or like, for the villager ID. If the archivist is not enabled, I don't need a villager ID. Which means the easiest way, and the most logical way, to completely disable the archivist is to make it so that if you set the ID to something unreasonable, it disables the archivist. Alright, so... What we're going to do... If... Archivist, oops, I can't spell. I really can't spell. Enabled. And I can actually do that. Uh, because this way, villager, like the archivist house, will still spawn, uh, but the villager itself won't exist. So we have to create this function. And all this function is going to do is check to see if the archivist ID is reasonable. Uh, 
Let's see here. How many archive or how many villagers are there in Minecraft to begin with? I think there's five. Negative one is a good disable ID. That's a good point. Uh, I was actually thinking that I could just disable it outright if it's unreasonable, but perhaps it'd be more reasonable to throw an error. Uh, except it's not a good disable ID. Uh, because I think zero is actually a legitimate value for a villager ID. So if you want to make, or I'm sorry, negative one is a legitimate ID for a villager. So if you actually want to set your villager ID to minus one, that should be legitimate. Zero is not legitimate because there's already a villager ID zero. There's actually a villager ID zero, one, two, three, four, and five, I think. Uh, but we're just going to use zero here, at least for the moment. I may extend this later, we may do more with it later, but for the moment this will work fine. So, we got this. Uh, this is going to make it so the archivist is null. So just to make sure that, you know, some nice sanity checks here before I start using the archivist to do anything. I don't need to build a merchant recipes if the archivist doesn't exist. So we'll just skip this step entirely if there's no archivist. All right, the other place, I'm gonna have to make this public and I'm probably gonna have to make it static to be able to access it from other places. Okay. So let's see here. If Mistcraft. Okay, that'll work. And that'll work. Now I could actually leave this so that even if it's set to disabled, it uses the ID and spawns villager zero, which would be a normal villager, a non-profession villager, I think. Which would be fine. I mean, my archivist houses would then come with a villager, but not an archivist. But I'm just going to disable it for the moment, because I prefer that. And there's less chance for odd behavior down the road. Now, let's look here real quick. Uh, it's interesting to note, I think you can register a villager ID of zero in here, and it will let you do that. But when if you do that, you're going to wind up with a normal villager and not your villager vast majority of the time. I hope. That or it allows you to override the standard villagers, which would be strange again. Uh, but I, actually I guess there's uses to, be able to, to being able to override the standard villagers. Alright, so Yes, literally every int value is a valid ID for villagers. Uh, the same is true of dimension providers. You have all the IDs ever. Uh, this is really good. It's, it's convenient. If we had the same thing for biomes, we could have crazy more biomes. As it is, we have the absolute maximum number of biomes. Nobody can add any more biomes because biomes have capped. We only can have 256 biomes in the game. Uh, vanilla has added a whole bunch recently, so things like extra biomes and whatnot are really hurting. We can't have any more biomes. Forgecraft 2 is full. There are literally no more spaces for biomes. Uh, 
Well, we have a lot from various mods anyway. Yeah. But there's over 160 just from vanilla now. So. I suppose there is a way of making a meta biome if need be. When uh, generating it, actually generating it as one, but picking up stuff as part of the actual generation well, from others. I could easily, from the perspective of Mistcraft, I could easily wrap biomes and make my own custom biomes inside of Mist Ages. Uh, because I can just build biomes on the fly. It wouldn't be hard. Mm. Uh, and then I wouldn't care about, you know, needing more biome slots. And technically, I don't. Unless I want to add more biomes to other dimensions, like the overworld, I don't need to add more biomes. And since I'm going to add biomes, you know, if I add biomes, they'll only be in ages anyway. I don't actually need biomes in the list. Though I may need to add them to something else so that people understand them and can reference them. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay, so that should do that. We should be able to disable the archivist now by setting it to zero. And I believe that's everything there. Uh, as a side note, right before the stream started, I actually went through and I changed my logging system. Uh, if you recall, one of the big things I did when I updated from... Uh, or updated to 1.7.2 and the Gradle and whatnot, the logger had changed for how Minecraft does its logging. And in order to avoid having to do that again in the future, I made a logger helper. And all it does is it wraps the log system. And you can also see I added this. So I can now, and I have a custom logger. Well, not a custom logger. I now have a personal logger. When the game starts up, I uh, get a log object from the log manager and I can write to that different log messages at different levels and now I don't have to worry about how logging is done anywhere else I just call my log helper and tell it do this alright <laughs> somebody's commenting in chat I just realized XCOMP changed his twitch avatar you're right I did I used to have the uh, sorcerer thingy it's an avatar I used for... My username when I was young... Uh, pretty younger... Uh, I'm still pretty young... Uh, was... Sorcerer. A lot of the time. If I could have it. And if I couldn't have Sorcerer, then I went with Sorcerer's Son. Uh, I don't... It was just kind of in reference to nothing in particular. Uh, it seemed as... you know, it, It's basically kind of like being a trope. The son of whatever... And since I was very young, it didn't matter. You know, it kind of made sense. Uh, it could be... A few people went, you know, why are you... Is that some reference to Harry Potter? I'm like, why do you think it's <laughs> reference to Harry Potter? It's easily a reference to, you know, something as similar to Star Wars. We Luke Skywalker, for all that matters. Uh, at least in terms of similarity for Sorcerer's Son. Uh, but yeah, and I picked up that avatar. I actually got that avatar from Icewind Dale. Um, it's one of the wizard pictures. So that one I was using for ages was from Icewind Dale. I edited it slightly to clean it up and make it so it wasn't exactly that one. Fixed it slightly and made it look a little better. To my, to my appeal, basically. I thought it looked better. <laughs> yeah. I'm not an artist, but I wanted to do a few different things to it. Uh, and then, yeah, I used that for ages and ages and ages, and it's still my... Avatar in different places, but at this point, my avatar in most places, uh, well, my username in most places is XCompWiz. I'm all over the places, XCompWiz. And my avatar for that now is basically the XCompWiz avatar that you see now. Uh, which is Atris from Mist, basically. <laughs> which is funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm just coming. I should have a wizard avatar with a computer in his hand because I'm comp whiz. Yeah, I actually have a pretty good like somebody. Uh, one of my friends here. Well, 
she doesn't live here in Finland anymore, uh, but she did. So one of the people I met when I first moved here, good friends with, drew a picture of you know, her group of friends at the time. And I was in this picture, and basically, yeah, it's a picture of me holding up my hand with bits and stars floating over it. I'm a very computer wizard. And she didn't even <laughs> know the username. All right, so... Yeah, that's that's that should be good. Uh, I'll make a quick commit of that. All right, so okay, a little bit of typing off screen here. As I uh, sort some stuff out. And then our next thing will be that. So what is this next thing? Bug fix. Missed age book created books lack link panel pages. Uh, right. So that doesn't make a lot of sense without context. If you create... One of the commands I've added to Minecraft uh, is slash missed age book or mist-age book. And what that does is it creates a descriptive book for the dimension that you reference. So if you do slash mist-age book 4 and dimension 4 is a mistcraft age, then it produces a descriptive book for that world. Uh, this is a fairly commonly used for debugging things and fixing things, and I used it a couple times uh, on stream recently, actually, uh, to create descriptive books to ages I just used using, or created using mist slash create, slash mist dash create, something like that. Uh, and a little bit after the stream closed, I was looking at different things on it, and I realized, well, I'll just show you. So, one of the things I noted was when I looked at them on the lectern, the page numbers were wrong. Uh, they didn't have any pages in them. You can clearly see the link panel because it defaults to having a link panel in the GUI. It forces one. Uh, I was clever enough when I did this that I, I forced this. Uh, that and it did used to require pages. It automatically had a link panel. Uh, now, however, as I move towards different things, it's going to start being a problem. So let's pull this up now. Play on here. So if you recall, I spent a little bit of time building a test environment on here. And then I copied it to the server, and now I've made some of those changes back over here on the single player thing. Alright, so we're loaded up, we're in. You could ignore some of these things. Whoops, that was wrong! Unfortunately, didn't matter. That was just the uh, backboard thing. Hmm. I should probably fix the bounding box on that. That doesn't look right. So. going. Oh, okay, that is actually running. Whoosh, suddenly lag spike. Okay. What was I doing? I was going to show you this, right? So, right. We're on page one of zero. That doesn't work. If I move, <laughs> if I go to the next page, it, it lets me go to the next page, then the slot vanishes, because I'm no longer on page one, and I'm now on page zero of zero. And it's odd that if I go to the page to the right here, I wind up going down one. It's just weird. And the reason that's the way that is is because there are no pages in here, and that's a weird invalid state for the book. So what I'm going to do is uh, try and make it so that these pages are forced. 
So, ways to do this. First, let's look at the command mist create. Or, sorry, uh, create age book, that's what I called it here. Slice compounds. Alright, so I just do the functionality through the, I the item age book itself. At this point, it means that these pages in the age data, so if I look here, uh, the book data is here. All right, so the pages aren't actually stored in the item age book. And this is something I plan on changing eventually. But at the moment, the pages are all stored in the age data itself. So that means when I create this, uh, through command create here, so create dim. I should really add the uh, link panel page to the age data. All right, so yeah. So I'm going to figure out where all this is called from. Uh, I believe it's just in my crafting of age books. Yes. Bind to new. Age. Then here. And then this is where the pages normally get added. So when going through the command, obviously that's not happening. Uh, we need to try and get the data then. Uh, does this happen to... Yes, it returns the age data. Actually, let's just do it within the uh, try-catch here. Because it doesn't matter. Data equals that. And we'll import age data. And now I need to add pages. Uh, I think I could just add a page. Yes. New. And then I'm, I don't remember exactly how I handle this, so I'm going to look at miscraft here. Because I create... No, I don't in here anymore. It's in... Uh, loader notebook, I think, now. Where did I move it to? Ah, here it is. So, this page.create link panel. That's what I want. Right. Very simple. Uh, there's apparently not an add page. This is the age data system itself. It's kind of interesting and complicated. Alright. So I have a helper system for building lists of things in util. So... There we go. Now I could force other pages to be in there too if I wanted, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, Right, so uh, that won't work actually now that I think about it because every time I use this command it's not going to add the page. <laughs> Oops. So first I need to check to see if the pages are empty. 
I can just do that by if data dot get pages dot is empty do that and that way it will force pages uh, technically it should always be empty here I'm just being pedantic uh, this is during the mist this is during the create command for when I'm actually creating the dimension itself uh, not the book uh, Actually, you don't run this command more than once. You can't run it more than once on a dimension anyway, so that's fine. All right. All right, so let's see here. I think that's that for that, actually. Let's test it real quick. Just hop in game, create a dimension, and... then use the age book creation command to produce a descriptive book for it. Go. So here's this. It's loading, 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 loading. Why does it take so long to load? All right. So this won't fix these at all. There's. I have no way to fix these. Uh, I I could add a check to see if there are no pages in it. Force pages. I could actually add the line I wrote in the command. Mist create ten, and then mist age book <clears throat> ten. And let's look at it. It has one page in it. Yay! All better. We're happy now. So that's good. That fixes that. <coughs> Sorry. Let's see here. We could actually add this check to other places to try and force item these item age books to be valid. Uh, Okay. I think this would happen. Listen. <coughs> Sorry, I've got something stuck in my throat. Uh, right. So this should be called fairly frequently anytime we want to know anything about the book. And this is called here to get the pages and whatnot. So that should fix those books now. Let's test that. Hey, Vu! Thanks for stopping by and saying hi. See here. Oops. Loading. All right. Let's see if these are fixed now. Whoa. That one must must have been something I wrote. Okay. It fixes on the second click. That's good enough. Really, this is kind of an invalid state that gets fixed. That's fine. Uh, it's not a critical thing, so I'm not going to worry about it. And it's pretty much a border case because the only way for that to happen is using the mist create uh, mist age book commands. 
and that's a pretty limited set of things where that happens. All right, so let's see here. All right, that should be that. Let's commit that. All right, we're on a ball. On a roll, on the ball, I'm not sure. We're on a something. We're on a ball that's on fire. That's what it's it. Alrighty. All right, uh, mine, I don't know the rest of your name, I don't understand the letters in there, has asked an interesting, or asked a question that nobody seems to be able to answer at this point, uh, but he, he originally asked, is this vanilla? And I'm going to guess that uh, he meant, am I modding vanilla? And that's actually an odd question. Uh, to clarify this, I'm using Forge to build a mod for Minecraft. So we're working through Forge here. Uh, the only other system I know of to build... Well, there, there's two other primary methods of making mods for uh, Minecraft. There's Bucket, which I never used and find Bucket kind of strange, personally. Uh, and then you could just do base edits, and that's what I did initially. It worked pretty well, actually. Uh, but I know what I'm doing. Most of the time, anyway. Okay. So we're all set. I have no idea what my last commit message was. What did I say? There's a commit message. Fixes miscreate dims not having link panel pages. That's a good commit message. Go me. <laughs> Alright, so what's our next thing? Ooh, we're getting to fun stuff now. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. Balance. Make meteors smaller and marginally more frequent. Uh, so, one of the things that's come up a lot for meteors is that they're huge, and they're pretty much a death sentence, and if you walk into a world and you don't know there's meteors, and then they show up, they, they can really mess things up. Because they tend to, you know, if they land somewhere near you, you're dead. And they wipe out everything. And then trying to get your stuff back is difficult. But if they land on your way home, like if you've set up a link book back home, if they land on that, it's gone. So I want to reduce the chances of them doing this. I don't want to reduce the impact that they have. So that you can actually... The meteor ages are survivable. I want them to be reasonably you know, survivable ages. It shouldn't be such the overkill it is. Uh, I was just really going ho when I first did this. So, Entity Meteor. Foosh. Uh, let's tone down the size quite a lot. Make them much smaller. Okay, and now uh, let's see, do I have any hard-coded numbers in here aside from things for rotation transformations and whatnot? I don't think so. Why do I have this? Oh, it's, it's a calculation. <laughs> That's silly. All right, so, yeah, these are things I need to tone down as well. I should probably put these on variables instead of having them hard-coded here. Let's figure out how I want to do that. So, private float scale equals 3.0 f semicolon 
And now, I can do this. I'm going to leave this the way it is, and you can see them, it's so you can see them far away. Back down here. This is scale times two. It's a big explosion. And this is all the explosions, and I have the system creating lots of explosions around the meteor. Uh, does this take ints or floats? Doubles, in fact. Wow. All right. So. Let's see here, four tenths, two fifths, so. Make these all proportional to this. Uh, eight tenths was four fifths. And this is based off the scale originally being 10. So making all these numbers proportional. Chestion, Chestion and Quat? Wow. Um, question in chat. How can I make a private Boolean per player? The easiest way to do that is to have data bound to the player. Uh, you can't make it a private Boolean. Uh, you can add Boolean, like you can add data to, data to players. I apparently can't speak today either. Uh, but you cannot simply uh... walk into Mordor. Yeah, yeah, that's what went through my head. I was definitely having, having difficulty completing the sentence I was going for at that point. <laughs> uh, but you cannot simply add a private boolean to things in vanilla. It's not really valid. It's not viable. Can't do it. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do it, to be honest. But you can... For instance, if you want to have the data so that nobody else can access it, you could try tracking it on your end by player name through some kind of system. That's a bit strange. Uh, more reasonable would be try to add uh, a player bound data element, uh, which you can do through Forge. I don't remember the specifics offhand because I don't think I've ever done it. Okay. Alright, so this was a little jaunt through the meteors. And I've made meteors much smaller now, and they should have much smaller impact. And let's find where all meteors are created from. Here's the command. I don't need to worry about the command. Here's effect meteor. That's the only time I need to worry about it. I'm going to make them slightly more frequent. And then we're going to test it. And I'm going to make a meteor age, and it should be very entertaining. <laughs> it's funny how destruction or when it always ends up being entertaining. Oh yes. Maybe it's just me, but I really like things going boom. Especially if I can cause it using programming. Oh, the service we've crashed with Cuglavia's ICBM mod. <laughs> yeah, a Final made a cannon using the hypersonic explosive devices that sent him 10,000 blocks into the air. Alright, so great I'm going to... Go ahead. I just said great fun. Mm-hmm. Alright, so I'm going to grab my uh, meteors. G H I L M. That way. Mesa, Mesa, Mesa. There we go. Meteors. And I'll also grab a link panel. The only things I really need in here are these two pages. Boom. And here we go. Wait for it. Generate. What's it doing? Where is it? Uh oh. 
We crash in the code. Oh, you couldn't see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's this. <laughs> yep. It worked that time. And there it goes. So we actually had two crashes in here. Uh-oh. Oh, I know why that is. Because I'm on an old version of Forge. Uh, pfft, I'm silly. I'm really silly. I should have updated my Forge before I started the stream. That was dumb of me. What I'm going to do instead is something pretty neat here. Uh, I have in my environment, you can see, a Forge project. This allows me to work on Forge uh, and make changes to Forge that I can then do pull requests and try and get stuff fixed in Forge itself. Uh, I actually made a pull request recently to fix the bug that just happened, which was the decorate biome decoration on uh, Void Ages, which is actually a vanilla problem. Uh, any dimensions that had exposed Void would crash when they tried to biome decorate over the Void because of a calculation error in vanilla. Uh, I fixed that through Forge, but I forgot to update Forge in my dev environment here. So we're just going to open this project. And then I'm going to uh, run as, run configurations. I'm going to run it through Forge so that actually I have Mistcraft running on my custom version of Forge here which is all kinds of fancy. Okay, so that's loading up again. The fact that there's exposed void, like I know now there's exposed void in this dimension, which may mean that meteors don't look quite so cool in here. I should have probably forced standard terrain just to make sure they'd look fun. But we'll see. Uh, cheat gamer, I'm afraid you don't actually know what you're saying here. MBT is MBT. Forge doesn't really do anything to MBT. Alright, so I'm in this dimension. It looks like it's an island world. No. Why did it crash? There must be a star fissure in here. Alright. Okay, so waiting for a meteor is kind of silly, so I'm going to spawn one. I actually can't because I didn't enable the command. I forgot. Oops. I should actually go change my configs so that I can use that command in here without changing the code. So let's see here. I realize you can't see this, and I apologize for that, but... Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to sign out real quick so we reload our configs. Just start it back up again. And then I'll have the command enabled. And then I can spawn whatever meteors I feel like. And we can actually observe what the meteors look like now. Uh, I wonder if how I did the renderer. And if I'm going to need to render meteor...
I may need to scale it down here, but we'll see. So this is loaded up now. It may look the way it did before, but it will act differently, which is going to be strange. Um, I'm inside of... What? How did I get down here? What dimension am I in? Nine. Okay. Boosh. What the? This isn't the dimension I was just in. That's weird. I have no idea what just happened. Let's go to our meteor's age. Okay, it's apparently this age. That's interesting. I wonder what age I was just in. Huh. Okay. Yeah, here's the star fissure that caused us to crash before. Okay. Now we're kind of waiting on meteors. Now I wonder if there's a sun in this dimension. There we go, sunlight. That's good. Alright, so... Ah, uh, yeah, still looks the same. Much smaller impact, though. Much more reasonable. And slightly more spherical, interestingly enough. Alright, so... Let's work on shrinking them. Yep, I just watched one land over there. Boom. I should also reduce its penetration range by scale. So the moment it digs in and then it explodes down here, which is kind of strange. So let's change that real quick. Alrighty. Uh, let's fix the rendering here. Starters. How is it building its, uh... Yeah. So, the easiest option is just to scale it based on its own scale. So, scale F. Oh, okay. Can't do it that. Alright, so now I have a meteor. Uh, Meteor.scale is private. Whoop! Just deleted everything. So I'm going to need a get scale function here. And I can actually just add it almost anywhere. Well, I can really add it anywhere, but I want to add it somewhere a little more intelligent than just anywhere. Uh, let's add it, let's just add it to the bottom here. Public float get scale 
return this dot scale. There we go. Continue. We have to save and quit this to be able to make this work properly. All right, so. Uh, I want here dot meter row get scale divided by 10 and the reason I want that is the scale was originally 10 And now this will scale it to the appropriate size based on the scale of the meteor. And now I've made the meteor size generic to something that I can actually scale easily by changing the variable. Which means later on I can make it so I have variable size meteors. And I can range from small meteor showers of really small meteors to giant hunkin' meteors from nowhere. Uh, Alright, so that will fix the render issue. What was the other thing? The uh, penetration problem. So, in ground time, we're actually going to have to add another customization here. Int uh, Alright, so this is used in different points. And there's a comparison somewhere. All right, so equals equals four. What it actually needs to be now is this. Just for the sake of uh, uh, not really correctness, but sanity, we're gonna make it greater than equal here. Uh, just in case it somehow goes over. It shouldn't be able to, but maybe it will. Okay. <laughs> Chat suggested 9x9 nine nine meteors for Direwolf. <laughs> Alright, so... 9x9 yeah. nine nine meteors that home in on Direwolf. That would be entertaining. They just follow them around. They don't ever crash, they just follow them around. So, that should do that. Let's go back to game here. Game loading. Okay. I left the window open so you, you can probably hear the street. I'll go close that. Be right back. That's better. Ooh, that looked good. I saw a meteor crashing over here. And that looks pretty good. It's a nice little hole. It's a pretty decently sized hole. Uh, it'll still take things out, but it's not going to take out quite the huge swath it did before. Uh, now, let's make one more. In order to make the change I'm thinking of, I'm going to have to quit the game real quick. So, one more thing. Okay.
add this in, so int, there we go. Uh, I may add a scale parameter to the summon command. That would be a good idea. So let's go ahead and pull that up so I remember to do that. Command... Command summon, that's not right. Command spawn meteor. There we go. Okay. And everybody checks their Steam messages. Looks really nice. Uh, Getting used to it now. Good. Oops. Okay. Let's see here. So I need to add these variables here. So scale and then int iteration. There we go. And we'll just pass them through. And now we have a couple of places where we need to fix this. This is the command here, so scale, filtration, we'll make local variables of them real quick. Let me down with that one away for a moment. Well, and now, and two. Okay, so I'm going to do something really interesting. I'm going to make it one. I'm going to make the penetration uh, one. I think that has to be at least one. I'm trying to think of it because of the way I do it. I could just make it greater than. Uh. No, it, it doesn't have to be. So I can make it zero real quick. And we'll try making some really small meteors that fall frequently. This should be fun. So, let's get in here and just see how much chaos this unleashes. Oops, too much chaos apparently. Mm, couldn't like a provider for dimension 9 does not exist, that's strange. The server had some issue with spawning entities. Okay, so get back over here. Oh, of course! Because, right, I've changed the constructors. Yeah, the constructors have to work a particular way. I can't do that. That's unfortunate. Particularly, I think I need that. Mm. 
Yeah, there has to be a world one. So I can actually do it... Uh, a little differently. Set scale... Here. And I can actually add these variables here. Oops. Float scale int penetration and then I should do these through this function. So, oops, duplicate this function here. This dot scale equals scale float scale and then int iteration. Whoops. Why do I keep? There we go. I can't spell either. Pin it. And I need to change that too. All right. Chat's commenting on the. Uh, that's always a great sign. Let's see how much chaos this unleashes. Crash! Too much chaos, apparently. And then this stuff. There we go. So this variable here is how far into the ground it goes before it starts, uh, before it actually blows up. All right, so now I should be able to make these micrometeorites I was talking about. Let's try it again. Chaos! Slightly less chaos, maybe. Actually, it's exactly the amount of chaos I expected the first time, so. So what I've done now is instead of having one really big meteor that falls in frequently and destroys everything, lots of smaller meteors that don't fall very far, or like they don't do very much damage individually, but there's a lot of them. So it's more of a meteor shower, which should be highly entertaining and interesting. Should be. We'll see. All right. Downloading terrain. Show the game. Let go. Oh, dear. So. My frame rate seems to be dropping pretty badly here. I'll try and load the game up some before we do this. This is just a dev thing. I don't really expect for uh this to ever occur. Alright, so this is doing nicely. We're getting a nice little surface damage. Fuck marks and explosions and things. Let's make this less frequent, so that I can actually do things. Uh, cut out the number by the two. That's a lot of meteors. Right. So, meteors, anyone? What this is doing is quite interesting. So many ores. It's dropping lots of ores right on the surface. They're very convenient. They're very easy to access. Because uh, they're right up here on the surface. The problem is there's a lot of meteors coming down. Even to avoid being hit by them. Whoa, dead pigs. 
That was fun. Poor pigs. Yeah, so in order to actually mine in this age, you'd need a spotter. But mining in this age would be highly lucrative. close. What if a meteor hits bedrock or obsidian? Um, these probably won't do a whole lot because they're not penetrating. So they won't destroy near block blocks so much, I don't think. Let's find out. Let's place down some obsidian, or some bedrock and obsidian. Uh, where's obsidian in this list? There it is. So I'm going to create an area here of obsidian. And we're going to wait for this to get hit. And while we're waiting for that to get hit, I'm going to create an area of bedrock. About the same dimensions here. Okay. Eventually they'll hit over here. Now. Okay, so... Yeah, we may increase the penetration, but let's see what these do. First, pause this real quick and look at the code real quick. Because I want to do something with my command. Uh, make it work like this for the moment. I still have to work on that command to do that. Okay, back to the game. I'm going to spawn a meteor right here. Here it comes. Well then, didn't even break through the uh, obsidian. Sure, not gonna do anything to the bedrock. Yeah. Okay, so let's change the penetration by one here and see what that does. The interesting thing for the penetration is it doesn't care what block you're hitting. So chances are it's going to go in... Huh. Here it comes. Geronimo. Huh. Ah. Well, with a penetration of one, what's it do to Netherrack over here? I wonder if one's too uh, small even still. It needs to be two at least. That looks pretty much the same as the others have been. It doesn't seem to be destroying below the platforms either. Okay. So let's change that to two for penetration. That's what I just did. Let's see what that'll do. Uh 
<laughs> Go right through. <laughs> yep, so it dug a hole. Alright, so the explosions aren't powerful enough to actually blast through the obsidian here. And the penetration's strong enough that it'll happily go through things. So that's not really what we want. Alright. Yeah. That does quite nicely, really. Uh, the explosions don't go very far through the obsidian. Uh, one thing that might be more reasonable is to try and upgrade the power of the explosions without increasing their size. So let's see if I can sort out how to do that. Alright, so when we create the explosions... Explosion... Actually, while we're shut down, I'm going to come over here and fix this for... Uh, the uh, parameters. So it's been a while since I worked on commands, and I'm not sure I remember how to do a bunch of things. So I'm going to look at... TPX here for how I handled uh, processing some things. Yeah. That's not the right one I want to look at. Commands. Create age book is a good one. Parse int. Is there a parse float? Not exactly. Uh, I do need a TPX check just to find out. When you do this, the string forms of these things. Yeah, we're just going to do this through uh, float. Float, parse float. There we go. Okay. If Complaining about here. Oh, that. Okay. Scan so that, and then for penetration. The thing is. So the, the reason the parse int was convenient is because it had this. So I'm going to look at my base command thing, because I have an extension to this, that I can add things to. And I'm going to add a parse float. Go. And now I'm going to replace this parse float up here with that.
Okay. Let's try that. And I'd like more powerful explosions, so that it actually deals damage to things that normally have explosive resistance, but in a fairly small area. And the way explosions generally work is uh, they do damage based on how big the explosion is, so it kind of peters out over distance, rather than having a fixed strength to a cap distance, I think. It's been a while again since I looked at that. So, explosion advanced. That's my explosion class here. Explosion size... Yeah, so here's how it actually calculates the, uh... Well, that's against entities. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Peter's out like that. This whole thing's kind of a mess. This is taken from, uh... I set scale twice? In the command? Do I? Oh, yes, I do. This is supposed to be penetration. Thank you. I still can't spell that, apparently. There we go. Uh... This explosive advanced thing is basically just... I copied the existing explosion stuff because I wanted to be able to do extra things, like these. Uh, and generalized it some, but I didn't generalize it all the way, so I don't have complete control over how things work. Because I don't understand a bunch of these things, so they're named funny. And I didn't bother to learn all of it. Like, memorize this code and figure out how everything worked, did everything it does. Uh, Let's see here. Well, this is the get explosion resistance here. So this is actually how it determines whether or not it breaks the block. If this goes below zero, it doesn't. Or if it hits zero, it doesn't. So if it doesn't have quite enough explosive power. So this is our explosive power at any given point. Uh, and we vary a bit around full power. Some explosions will be slightly more powerful than others. But this is still explosion size as opposed to explosive power. Uh, explosion size controls the radius of our explosion. And we'd like to be able to control the power separately from the radius. So let's try doing that. Just for the sake of... Uh, 
ease of use. This, that, so we can kind of wrap the constructor and automatically call this constructor. And now I can control the power separately. I can't type, but I can do this. I still don't know what this does. I think it's everything in a 16 block area. Maybe. Yeah. No. What do these do? Oh, it's rays of 16 long. No. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. So, let's see here. Divided by that, one. Segments. It's the segments of the thing. So we break up... Uh, uh, the explosions are ray-based. They're basically ray-casting. Uh, and we apparently break the rays up into 16 segments. Which is interesting. Hum. In that case, can we actually separate power from segments? Because if we do that, are we going to end up skipping places? We might. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. The first one wants to be equal to minus zero. It's R10. It's just the segment length or interpolation thing. And this normalizes it. And we add this plus that. And that's our step. Um, all right. I think this should still be fine. So if I... Let's come out this constructor. No, it's not. Let's just figure out where all it's used. Need this constructor. I don't want this constructor. It's just going to cause problems. All right. Fix up this. Okay. That should be that.
Now, the power here is currently the same thing twice. Uh, so I actually want to... I'm going to multiply it by 2 here, just as kind of a test thing. Chat's commenting on all the different mods that have meteors nowadays. Mistcraft, I think, was... It wasn't the first, because uh, there were mods that did meteors sometime before. Uh, but it was probably one of the ones that did them commonly early on. And now... Uh, apparently AE2 has meteors. And then there's iTunes' It Fell From The Sky. So. Although I wouldn't would hesitate to call that a meteor. It's just the beginning of an ongoing destruction. Yeah, this is true. It's not really a meteor. Uh, what happened? It's shutting down. There we go. Loading world. That was strange. I don't know what just happened. Minecraft got confused. Alright, so now these things have double power. And I'm going to have to let the world load some because they're falling too frequently for it. Okay. Let's check the defaults on my command here. That's two. What if I set it down to nothing here? My default. And then spawned my meteor here. Moved out of the way, because I won't be in the way. It's a little lag. Wow. Okay, it didn't actually increase the uh, power as I wanted it to. I seem to have increased the lag, and that's all I've increased. <laughs> Alright, so that's not going to work that way. I may need to adjust how it calculates uh, interaction and reduction of strength. So... Go back to here, get rid of this variable, basically revert all that. So you're making them smaller, but also intensifying? I'm making them smaller and a bit more frequent. Uh, at the moment, they're really frequent. This is not as frequent as I'm going to make them. Okay. Uh, it's just for testing. Uh, but I'm making them smaller because, as it stands, they're too powerful. And they make the age completely unlivable, and that's not really the goal. Because uh, it's more interesting. I want to make the age interesting more than anything. Uh, they're not supposed to be safe, but it's supposed to be possible to, you know, deal with. At the moment, they're not. So... Let's see, back to here. So we're not going to turn into giants if we get hit by them? <laughs> well, it could have a zombie turn into a giant if we get hit by it. Mm. My daughter loves that movie. Okay, I'm going to reduce this here. Try that. What I'm doing is reducing how much explosive resistance is done per block. So now they're still capped at their size, but they'll do more damage per block within that size. I think, if I understand this correctly. So, 
loading up. Now at the moment, I've got the meteors turned way, way up just for the sake of testing them. I should actually, I could go ahead and turn them down some, so, uh, Okay. Turn them down a bit there. Okay. So I don't expect it to be able to drill through bedrock. Let's see what it does to the obsidian here now. Spawning meteor. Okay. Huh, that chunk just became invisible. Let's drop another one on it. It's true, two in swift succession. Let's see what that does. <laughs> Nothing to the obsidian, unfortunately. Wow, I've reduced them a lot. It's practically clear skies now. Right, so that's carving through lesser things. It's most of them. Let's look back at our code. I think perhaps the Where's the explosion? Yes, here it is. Perhaps my most reasonable course of action is to actually uh this. So the block resistance itself is considered less. Uh, this will Im this will make things that are normally really hard to destroy much easier to destroy and things that are normally easy to destroy will just be a little bit easier to destroy because it's a factor here. So let's go back to trying that and let's drop meteor on here. One of the interesting things and real problems with how explosions work is that you can't uh, stack explosions. So you, the damage done by an explosion is instantaneous, and if it doesn't break anything, it doesn't break anything. Uh, it'd be nice if it left them in kind of a damaged state. But it's not something that happens. Because if they did, then this really would carve through things because it's lots of explosions compacted together. One option is I could make my explosions leave things in slightly damaged states, but I'm not sure how complex that is. Right. Let's go back over here. Set the divide by four. Still nothing. The game's not visible. Sorry, guys. Alright, let's try... Let's try...
log 10. This will really impact, oops, that was wrong. Really impact the uh, more difficult things to destroy while scarcely affecting the other things. Wow, that completely obliterated the Ascidian. <laughs> Sorry, the game wasn't visible for that. Shouldn't affect the bedrock. Oh my goodness, it destroyed the bedrock. Whoops. Wow. Okay. What's it do to normal areas now? Chews on them. Yeah, size is a misnomer. It's actually strength. So I've been controlling the strength and not the size of things for forever. Uh, okay. Let's go back to the code and uh, adjust that some. Okay. Let's make that just plain log. That should be better. I'll float over here. I'm not sure what's happening in game. Nothing's occurring when I do stuff. The game seems to have frozen. Alright. Let's, uh... Close out the game, if I can get control back. Let's just do this. There we go. Okay, so... I don't think that the uh, get explosion of resistance should ever return anything negative. Somebody's commenting on uh, this possibly causing problems. It really should always be a positive number, in theory. Uh, if it were a negative number, it would actually make explosions bigger. Which would be counterintuitive. Uh, I may check just to be on the safe side. Just because some mod may decide, let's make the explosion more powerful. Sounds like a sensible thing to do. Yes. Well, I'm actually going to make it so it ignores negative values. Uh, actually, let's... Is man or routine. So, if it's a nan, uh, not a number, so the calculation's errored out, then or fourteen equals zero, and we'll be done. So we'll just make it so that negative numbers make it invincible, actually, because I don't know a better way to handle that.
But in practice, I don't think anybody uses or should use negative powers anyway. Hi, how are you? Hello. Hello. Live stream. Hi, live stream. I thought I'd stop in and say hi while the caffeine started to work. Oh, I'm with you there. Hmm. It's uh, not doing anything. Okay, this isn't working. My clouds are funny. I've noticed this. I'm not sure why that is. I could try doing is amping up the power and increasing the decay rate. Again, Steam pings me, even though I thought I fixed that. Oh, right. Hang on. I'm, I'm actually trying to spell it with an I instead of a Y. Hey, guys. Hi, XCOMP is streaming. Okay, so no swearing. I got it. Alright, so... We could try amping up the power and increasing the decay rate, but that'll, what that will wind up doing is producing perfectly spherical explosions most of the time, and then only occasionally when it runs into something really hard doing, drilling through it. Uh, if the explosion resistances were something reasonable in the game, as opposed to, you know, nigh on impossible to break through... Uh, perfect yeah. spheres of Minecraft? What blasphemy is this? <laughs> Okay, it wouldn't be quite perfect spheres. It'd be spheres made out of cubes. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, it, it, it mostly comes down to those values being strange. Ooh, today's Thursday. Space Engineers gets updated. I forgot about that. Ah, you're right. Okay, so let's see here. I just have to go with this. Okay. May just not be able to drill through obsidian that way. Uh, so let's go back to trying with some form of block penetration. <laughs> Sorry. Smack. Uh. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh oh, I lost something. Why is there only 84 people watching you? Do people, what the hell people? It's early in America, or at least in my part of America. Yeah. How are you doing, Marby? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Just fetched a mountain dew for myself. Ah, let grasses grow and waters flow. Hey, Vivas. Hello. Hello, I didn't think you'd be able to join us. Yeah, I didn't think so either. But. Surprise. Got finished up those working on. What's going on? 
Uh, at the moment, I'm rebalancing meteors. Ah. Alright, so... Incoming meteor... code real quick. Where'd my command go? Here's my command. It's really effect over here. Let's default the penetration to two here. I think that's actually Yeah, so where all is this? Here. This is the main thing. All right, so... Oops, I left the game running. All right. This is basically just a penetration counter. How many blocks we run into in terms of uh, layers of blocks. And this is how long we go through. So, uh, it has to be at least two before we bother deleting any blocks. Alright. Well, let's see here, I th don't remember where the uh, let's delete blocks things is. Break blocks in ABV. It's called from here. Right, so that's right before the penetration thing. Uh, what we could do... Doesn't the uh, hardness of obsidian change if you have industrial craft installed? Yeah, probably. Uh, I think one of the things, though, instead of increasing penetration of stuff, Oh, key bounce, you've missed so much. Uh, x -Comp had a face cam on, and he was running around his house with no clothes on. Man, it was brilliant. <laughs> yep. No. No. You, you, you were showing this off to the world before you were showing off to me. I'm so hurt. He, he, was, <laughs> he was doing the windmill and everything. Oh my. Uh, what? Anyway. D anyway no, I, no, you I, don't I, We don't have a webcam, no. and it's a PG stream, man. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Kick you out of here, you can keep that up. Alright, so... One of the things I'm thinking... We do the uh, block destruction before the explosions anyway. Regardless of how far we've gone through layers. Uh, one of the things we can do is to increase the bounding box of the destruction. Uh, this way we'll always uh, go through... Like, we run into obsidian, we'll delete the blocks we ran into, at the very least. At the moment, we're not. So... I'm gonna do... How are these used? Are these negative? No. Extend this all a bit. And then, let's try that. So I'm going to build up my little uh, obsidian floor again. Glass Pelican says, hello, Morby. What? Glass Pelican says, hello, Morby. Oh, hello, Glass Pelican. And then we shall summon a meteor. Let's see what it does. I also don't want to 
seem like I'm trying to steal anybody, but uh, for those of you who are regulars in my live stream, it's still happening today. Just I'm waking up first. <laughs> what are you live streaming? Um, Agrarian Skies. Ah. Right. On your own? Oh, say again? Wait, uh, on your own, or are you playing with someone? I uh, know, on my own. I, do, I pretty much only do single player these days. Ah, cool. Chat saying the game's not visible. Oops. Okay, well, I'm just building a platform anyway, so. Okay. So I'm a meteor. <laughs> There's two meteors up there. I just wanted one. Wow. Okay, then. How many layers of obsidian do you need before it, uh... doesn't drill through? And I've probably got, uh... I think about it. Yeah, the penetration's on up. Oops. I didn't want that. Uh, Chad's requesting that you turn up the brightness. Should be up, but let's check. Well, it's all the way up. Ah. You guys are spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> all it right, does so seem a bit dark on my own screen. Yeah, I'm going to try and increase the time here. It changes when you, uh, if you're on full screen, because you don't have the white border around you, which... From, uh, yeah. That is much better. Thank you. Okay. Mm yeah, that's better. Oh, you're gonna nail that bat with a meteor. Alright, let's see here. Back real quick. Didn't quite, uh... How do the meteors choose which ores to drop? Is it Does it pick randomly from ore generation, or is it a set ores? Uh, it's an effect. Let's see here. So, I've got explosion effects. Uh... And then I have add ores after explosion here. Uh, actually should have an event in here, I think. Oh, how did I do this? At the moment it just does iron, coal, and gold here, but I had something else. It's reasonably certain. Basic. Hmm. Interesting. It doesn't work the way I remember it working. <laughs> Alright, well, it uh, goes through and adds ores after the explosion. 